there's only one stat you care about. Once you become a head coach, there's only one that you care about. Winning and losing. That's the only one. Like what yeah. it looks like and how it happens, you don't care. And at least I don't. <laughs> I don't care. And, you know, I used to be like, you know, we didn't score enough. We didn't move the ball enough. We did that, you know, like all those things matter, but ultimately it's one thing that matters. Episode 111 featured Coach Ben Fox, the head football coach at Maryville College. For more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. So I, I'm originally from East Tennessee. I'm from about two hours north of here, uh, a town called Johnson City. That's where I was born and raised. My family's from there, been there for a long time. So East Tennessee is a level of home for me. Um, I went to college at uh, Washington University in St. Louis. So I was a D3 football player uh, and had a great experience there and graduated. And when I left, I, I got a GA job. And guys in the professional appreciate this. You know, you decide you want to get into coaching and you just realize there's like 10,000 guys that do that. So you kind of got to go wherever you can go. Uh, and I got a chance to be a graduate assistant at a school called Bryant University uh, outside uh, of Providence in Smithfield, Rhode Island. So I went there, was a GA there for two years, and then got promoted and was a receivers coach my last year. Uh, had a really awesome experience learned a ton of football and was around some really high level coaches and some awesome players as we were transitioning from division two to division one FCS. So seeing a different kind of player, which was really fun for me. Um, at that point, you know, it had been three years and decided I want to try to get married. So I was looking for more of a full-time job uh, and wanted to be back South and through a connection I met at the coaches convention for one of our, our quarterbacks coach at, at Bryant had, worked with the guy that ended up being my head coach uh, at Huntington College uh, down in Montgomery, Alabama. So I met him at the convention and he had a job come open and got a chance to get hired, which was a lot of fun. And and we lived there. You know, it's one of those things you take jobs, you think you'll be somewhere for one or two years and end up being there for five. Uh, and Montgomery kind of became what I tell everybody is kind of like my family's hometown. That's where we were living with my wife and I got married, our first daughter, our first uh, child, our daughter was born there. Um, you know, I just had a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of good experiences, uh, in Montgomery learned, kind of became kind of the coach. I think I wanted to be, saw a lot of that, but kind of the man I want to be and what matters, uh, to me and what we were going to be kind of built on. Um, and then left, had a chance to, to go work for, um, Coach Fry at, uh, at Center College, left there and went, was office coordinator at Center College for four years, uh, and then got a chance to get hired here as the head coach. Um, so was, I, I've been really lucky. I think, you know, in small college football, I, I played for Larry Kimbaum at WashU. He just kind of finally retired. Um, he quit being the head coach and then kind of stayed around. And then he's all the way done. Now he's there for 35 years and wow. incredibly successful. I, I mean, just an incredibly successful, good person. Uh, and then I got a chance to work with Coach Turk, who's probably one of the godfathers of division three football in the south he really is and and for saw how they ran the program and delivered a legitimate college experience to you know pro, you know the kids that were coming there which was something i was wanting and wanted to see how it was done in other places and then got a chance to go to work for coach fry who's the uh, all-time winningest coach at uh at, at center so it's you know my three coaches head coaches i've had and as either a player or an assistant in Division Three football are all the winningest head coaches at the schools they were at, which is, I think, really wow. unique and seeing different ways that everybody operates. You know, I, I think it's, I had a really awesome conversation with Coach Kim Baum last week. I was talking to him uh, and it was a lot of fun to catch up with him. I missed him at the coaches convention and it was good to hang out and, and, and talk to him. And it's been a lot of fun. And I think you, you go as a coach, as you grow in what you want, your profession to be and what you want your job to be, you you kind of take bits and pieces from each place along with the things that you believe. And it kind of creates what your culture and your ethos is going to be about what you want your program to look like, what you want your coaching style to be, what are the core values that are going to be things that really take hold of you, what are they really going to be? And not necessarily beliefs. I think if you're going to be a head coach and you're going to have core values and you're going to have things that you pride yourself on they can't be beliefs they have to be convictions they have to take hold of you and things that you really are are part of who you are that's how you help sell it and help you help identify prospects and other coaches and people that are going to be around your organization that believe those th same things it's got to be a part of who you are and it's got to be authentic and it's got to be real got it and 
so I, I also come from a division three background myself. So I played at Gettysburg college. So I definitely can relate to, to your experience and how formative it, it really is to come from that background. And after, and I saw on the website coach, so you've been coaching for just about 12 years. It looks like mm -hmm. it looks, it's crazy. I mean, it's really kind of weird to think about <laughs> We're getting closer to 15 than we are to five, which is scary. So yeah, so I'm just curious. So going back to your time at Bryant, mm -hmm. can you talk about some of the things that you learned at, you know, being a coach at the FCS level and then what you learned and applied to your current role as as a Division three head coach? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I learned something I tell, I think probably the biggest takeaway I learned from my time at Bryant was something I tell every recruit that comes on campus. It was true then, it's true now, that if you're going to be a college football player, no matter where you go, you have to be able to answer three critical questions, that they're the most important of anything. And I think it's true across any level. It's can the prospect play there at the level they want to play? Or can they add value, have a role on the team? What does that look like? Right, Especially as you go to small college division three football, because let's face it, most of us in division three football, there is a level of, we are an extension of admissions. That's part of what we're trying to get done. That's why we have a little bit bigger rosters. So we have to make sure, I think, in my opinion, as you bring guys on a campus and bring guys into your program, you have to be able to paint a vision for them about what their role can be initially and potentially what it can grow into. Right. And and I think we do a good job here at Maribel of trying to identify guys that we think can actually have a role and help us pursue a conference championship and hopefully ultimately help us pursue a national championship. Find those kinds of people. Right. Number two, can they do the schoolwork? And not all schools are the same. They're not. And so there's different levels about what guys can actually do and perform within school. And then I think now a lot of it too with families is is do, does their family value the education? Are they going to help support that young man as he goes through college and it deals with adversities and never dealt with, right? And then number three, can they afford the education? Like, can we make sure that we can afford the education? Now, part of that is on us as a school to do some work to try to make it financially affordable. You know, that was always the question, right? At, at the FCS level is, okay, what's it going to take for him to be able to afford to come here? We're going to need to give him full scholarship. We're going to need to give him a half, a quarter. What's it going to take for him to be able to come here? How do we splice it up? But I think it's the same conversation, no matter where you are, except probably at F FBS football, because you, the school is provide is paying for the college, right. right? But anywhere else, I think those are the three critical questions as you're identifying prospects. Because if it's not yes to all three of those, it will end in catastrophe. Yeah. It won't end bad. It's going to end in catastrophe of this guy's flunking out of school. This guy is a cancer on your team. This guy is leaving um, and they can't go back to school, whatever, whatever, whatever. Right? We got to get yes to those three. We try to cut that off on the front end and then worry about degree outcome, cultural campus, all, all the other things that are important, but they're not the critical factors. Yeah. And I think first and foremost, being a division three guy yourself too, I'm sure you can attest to this. Education is the number one thing. You have to yeah. find the right fit when when you're looking for a school and, mm -hmm. and what's going to give you the best opportunity to get a job post graduation. Yeah. But from a football perspective, you know, yeah. a lot of a lot of high school kids don't really realize the level of football that that we're playing at Division Three. Yeah. You know, it, it's high level. And yeah. you also have to realize you have to pick a school that you're going to be able to play at if mm -hmm. if that's something that's important to you if that's important to you right yeah. what's what matters to you i think you know everybody forgets just how big the world is that yeah. there's just a big world out there with a lot of people in it and there's a lot of guys who are really good football players and it's hard to understand that like literally every guy on our team was a multi-year starter at their high school and like every guy on our team was one of the best players on their high school team or was all conference. I'd say half of them were all state or all region or whatever. That's just a big world. And I think it's hard for guys to understand sometimes. I think that the, probably the biggest thing that any prospect can do, and that's part of our job as coaches, is to get guys to come watch us playing games. 
come to spring practice, like come visit and watch us practice and watch our guys and be around and see. So you can see what a 22 year old man that plays college football looks like because right. different from an 18 year old kid. And they got to get there to come see because the guys turn 18 and they're Superman and they forget what it's like when they're 14 and they do not want to be on the field. They're freshman year high school. Please don't put me out there. They forget what that's like. They all of a sudden they're Superman and they're fixing to have the exact same experience when they go to college. They just don't know it yet. Yeah. I think that's probably now, especially at Maryville. You know, when we first got here, it was like, look, everybody, you guys are all going to get a chance to compete as, as freshmen. You're all going to, because we were taking over a situation where there needed to be an influx of talent. We need really good players. That's where we're going to turn the tide to start winning games. We're coming off an eight, two season. We've got a lot of guys coming back. Now it's about managing expectations and recruiting guys that actually want to be here, right? They're going to be here. Yeah. that are willing to develop. that are willing to work on that want to get better and then grow into playing when they're juniors and seniors. Because right. That's, that's, the best division three teams play with juniors and seniors. Yeah. That that's period. They play with adults. If you can manage and keep your guys, you're going to be good. It, it's hard to stink when you got a bunch of juniors and seniors playing. It's really hard to, to yeah. not be good. Yeah, definitely. And that's, I mean, that's just going back to like, like you were saying, like managing expectations and yeah. creating, creating that culture. And, and I came from, Gettysburg College and we went through a little bit of a rough, rough patch when I was playing and we had a, a couple of coaching changes and they're starting to turn things around and from talking with those coaches like Coach Banks, Coach Coach Hoyt at Gettysburg, a lot of them are just talking about just changing, just changing the whole mindset and what because a lot of kids just have never experienced winning at the college level and it's, yeah, you know, one, once you experience that for the first time, like you were saying, it's and, and you have those older guys that are playing. It's it's tough to not to not win. Yeah. Well, it, you know, I think it it's been too. This has been a nice change when you become the head coach versus being a coordinator, right? There's only one stat you care about. Once you become the head coach, there's only one that you care about: winning and losing. That's the only one. Like what yeah. it looks like and how it happens, you don't care. And at least I don't. <laughs> no, I don't care. And. You know, I used to be like, you know, we didn't score enough. We didn't move the ball enough. We did that, you know, like all those things matter, but ultimately there's one thing that matters. But I think you learn in college, especially when you're a head coach and you're trying to turn something around, winning is really hard. And when you come from other programs that are a little bit more established and you work at these programs that are established and you're winning and you just naturally have these good players and all of these things, Sometimes you can take it for granted just how much effort it takes to get good players there, to develop the players, to get them to stay, to develop the staff, to get them to stay, to build something where good players want to go. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's hard. And that's what's hard. And winning is hard. It's hard. There's a reason it's the most fun thing ever when you win. And there's a reason it's the worst thing ever when you lose. Because it's, really right. it's really difficult to take everything you have. Exactly. Awesome. Well, Coach, thank you very much. Any last words you want to share with the audience today? Yeah, look, I think that our, our game is is an incredible game. I think our profession uh, has bits and pieces that are awesome, some that are not so awesome. But I think that uh, through all the changes and stuff that's going on within um, football, that there's still a lot of players that need to get held accountable, that need to get loved, and they need to, somebody that's going to pour into them to help them become the very best version of themselves. And I think there's a market for guys that want that. And if there's coaches out there that want to deliver that, um, that's that's going to help our game stay strong. Like it, it's Division three football is, is only is the best it's ever been because of all the other changes that are happening around the talent pool that we are seeing that are coming through here. There's better players every year. Yeah, and I think it's more and more competitive, and I think that there's a lot of people here that are doing it for the right reasons, and it's an it's an awesome, awesome situation. And I just want to encourage all the coaches that are out there, people that may be watching, like keep loving these players, keep loving them, and and, and keep coaching them hard that they crave structure and they need it, and uh, it's 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 a calling, it's not a job. And if you feel like you're called to do it, 
give it a th- give it everything you have, man, and it'll be an awesome experience. Yes, sir. Awesome, coach. Thank you again, and and congrats on the on the success this year. Awesome, brother. I appreciate it, Justin. If you ever need anything, let me know, man. Thank you, guys.